Good afternoon. Let's do some business. We are doing it live right here and doing more at four weekday afternoons. We get right down to business with the News Driven Hour right after Ben Shapiro and just before the 790 KBC News Blitz with Randy Wang at five. Motec on Money live on the air right now on 790 KBC. Streaming live online worldwide at KBC.com and the On Demand Motec on Money podcast, KBC.com, Apple iTunes and all your favorite podcast platforms. Worst day of the year for blue chip stocks. Worst day for the Dow since March of last year. Stocks finishing broadly lower today with the Dow sliding about 600 points on concerns now about the Fed's next move on interest rates. The Dow coming in for a closing loss of 606 points, settling at 39,065. Last week, we saw it pop above 40K to a record high. The S&P 500 pulling back some more from its recent all-time high, down 39. And the Nasdaq slipping 65, ending at 16,736. All the major averages still hovering near the recent all-time highs. The Dow, though, logging its worst daily percentage decline since uh, March 22nd. And as bond yields rose, the stock market's most interest rate-sensitive segments fell. The S&P 500 real estate sector, for example, ended almost 2.2% lower. The yield in the 10-year note climbed slightly to 4.47%. Boeing in the spotlight, helping the Dow drop today down about ne nearly 8%, creating a major drag on the blue chips. NVIDIA, though a star performer today, coming off its latest earnings report, NVIDIA closing at a record high of $88 and change. There's just shy of 1038 a share, a gain of 9.3% on the day, coming off its latest earnings news. NVIDIA posting April quarter results that showed overall revenue of 26 billion dollars among the casualties of the day shares of live nation ticker symbol lyv on that one closing down nearly eight dollars the justice department is suing to break up live nation entertainment the parent company of Ticketmaster, for allegedly cranking up fans costs by controlling the concert industry the antitrust case alleges that live nation through Ticketmaster controls around 80 percent of major concert venues primarily ticketing plus an increased share of secondary ticket resales Big news in the crypto world today. Did you hear this? The SEC approving a rule change today that would pave the way for ETFs that buy and hold Ether, Ethereum, one of the world's largest cryptocurrencies. There's been buzz about this, and we've been talking about that in, on this program. The decision coming less than six months after the Securities and Exchange Commission approved Bitcoin ETFs. Those funds have proven to be a big success for the industry, with net inflows already surpassing $12 billion dollars. According to uh, MarketWatch, uh, late May had been long pegged as a potential decision date for the Ether Fund since it coincided with the deadline for the SEC to decide whether the Vanek Ethereum ETF could proceed. Ethereum rising uh, 2%, although it follows a 20% surge from earlier in the week in anticipation of today's decision. Gold and silver, meanwhile, settling sharply lower this week. Um, looks like gold today pulled back 55.70 to settle at 2,337.70 an ounce. Gold had hit a record high earlier this week at 2,438.50 an ounce. Silver down a dollar four to 30.46 an ounce, marking the lowest finish in about a week after hitting a 13-year high recently. Let's see. We uh, see oil also finishing with a loss today to uh, stretch that decline into a fourth consecutive session. Crude oil in New York down 70 cents to 76.87 a barrel. Brent crude in London, the global benchmark, down by 54 cents at 81.36 a barrel. Ray of sunshine in the real estate business. Mortgage rates down for the third week in a row now, pushing the average 30-year rate to a below 7% for the first time in more than a month. The average 30-year fixed, according to the latest survey from mortgage giant Freddie Mac, is now 6.94%. The average rate on the 15-year fix, 6.24, and uh, a year ago that was at 6.28%. Uh, uh, just last week, a year ago, was at 5.97%. We heard today from the Atlanta Fed president, Rafael Bostic, former USC professor. He expects to hold interest rates steady for the long haul, noting that a return to the Fed's 2% annual inflation target could be a way off. Bostic is now a voting member of the Federal Open Market Committee. That's the Fed's policy making part, and he served as president of the Atlanta Fed since 2017. He previously was a professor at the uh, Saul Price School there at USC. 
In the business of show business today, we see a Paramount Global assigned a new multi-year content distribution deal with Charter Communications for its full portfolio of linear cable networks. The both companies making this announcement today. The companies did not disclose the financial terms of the deal in which the ad-supported versions of Paramount's direct-to-consumer services Paramount Plus Essential and BET Plus Essential will be included at no cost to Charter's Spectrum TV customers. Charter will also make Paramount direct-to-consumer products available for purchase to millions of its Internet-only customers. Coming up later this hour, new concerns about crime in Los Angeles, not only affecting businesses, but also commuters, folks on the Metro Transit system, with the mayor now calling uh, for an increase in police presence on Metro buses, trains, as well as the stations. Total crimes in the L.A. Metro system have surged more than 65% so far this year. I'll discuss the situation with the Honorable Dennis Zine, former L.A. City Council member, former LAPD sergeant, and current LAPD reserve officer. Dennis Zine will be on the line with me later, live later this hour. Also head on China, I'll be speaking with China expert Gordon Chang, the author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War. China now holding military drills around Taiwan as tensions rise again between China and Taiwan. But first, on your money, the markets, the economy, crypto, and the whole works now. Joining us live, investment expert Brian Perry, chief investment strategist and portfolio manager at Mint Asset Management at mintassetmanagement.com, also author of the 25% cash machine. Brian, thanks for coming to the line here. A rough day for the Dow, the worst day of the year for the blue chip index, down more than 600 today, settled at 39,065. Give us your assessment of what we got here. Thanks for having me on, Frank. And yes, it was a tough day for the Dow, but the rest of the market here also, you know, started to give back some of the recent gains. Uh, really, on these global PMI numbers, the U.S. Uh, global PMI numbers came out today, and uh, it was really uh, they were strong they were for April here. We had the uh, manufacturing index was up uh, to 50.9 from 50 uh, on an estimate of 50, while the uh, services index PMI jumped to 54.8 from 51.3 that was uh, um, registered in, in March. <clears throat> so this really set the bond market um, on, on the defense there with the 10-year bond you know, yield rising back up to um, 4.475 at the close. And so when bond yields back up, <clears throat> the market tends to, you know, to take, a, take a deep breath because then it just means higher for longer with the Fed. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and just the fact that um, the market was starting to price in a rate cut or two by the end of the year uh, with that most recent CPI. Now, bear in mind, these PMI numbers are, are pre, um, you know, um, this, this doesn't indicate, you know, this was in, back in April. So, you know, May numbers have, 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 have softened up a bit. And also the, um, uh, the Fed meeting, also the Fed policy statement that came out earlier this week also said, you know, higher for longer. But th that, that policy statement was also before we got the, the softer PMI numbers and the softer labor numbers. So it's a mixed bag here where, you know, you still have, you know, bad news sometimes is good news. And then good news, I like to think that is still good news because it means higher sales profits and, and business conditions for most um, uh, companies out there as long as inflation can be, you know, somewhat uh, uh, held in check. <clears throat> the really big news today is certainly the AI rally is fre has fresh legs. NVIDIA really had a, you know, a blowout quarter there. They, they did everything just right. It was like the perfect quarter. You know, they came in with uh, numbers that beat on the top and the bottom line. They, uh, they talked about big backlog, stock buyback, uh, dividend increase, uh, the, uh, the business of rolling out Blackwell, which is their next generation chip, uh, coming out earlier than expected. And this is really good for the, the whole AI trade here, not just uh, NVIDIA, but Avago and you know, uh, Microsoft, Applied Materials, Oracle, Micron Technology, Western Digital, these are all big players uh, that are part of the coattails and, and, and the front runners also with NVIDIA. So we like, I, you know, th this trade is on and it's still a good, you know, one to two years of, of this kind of accelerating growth in this area as, as investment, capital investment in AI is just booming right now. Um, and, and NVIDIA is training their, their, comp their, their customers very well, Frank, because they're, instead of people were thinking there was going to be a vacuum of people waiting for the Blackwell chip to come out and not buying as many H1 or, <clears throat> or H200 uh, chips here, and they're saying, look, you got to get all you can right now because you know we're sold out every month of everything we make, uh, and this is what the big you know data centers and, and a lot of other industrials now are, are, are buying you know these chips hand over fist, so it's it's very good for the you know the the tone of the market here because. People are wondering whether this is this is not a bubble. This is the this is the real deal, you know, for the next you know digital transformation of, of all kinds of information. And so, you know, on today's hits, you know, you had uh, 
you know, like you said, um, you know, you have Boeing, McDonald's, United Healthcare, uh, Apple, Goldman, Home Depot, Caterpillar, American Express, IBM, Microsoft, all giving back a little bit of ground. Boeing, a big loser. Yep. They seem to be, you know, just in a, a serial mess. You know, one thing after another. So, but it weighs on the market there. And um, at the same time, <clears throat> you know, we had some really good earnings stories this week here. This this week is we're Thursday here, but it's been a week full of, of incredible news uh, across the board. You had um, other stars, you know, in the earnings season like Deckers, which owns Uggs and uh, and uh, Hoka, um, the brand, uh, you know, the the the, the shoe brand, uh, doing extremely well. Um, Applied Materials had great numbers. Synopsis, which most, most people aren't familiar with, S N P S. They are a fabulous chip company that that makes software designs for Nvidia. Okay, so that that broke out uh, on on great numbers there. Um, you have also companies that are breaking up now, following the lead of General Electric, uh, 3M, and Textron here with DuPont announcing they're going to split the company into three different companies here: water treatment, electronics, and then internet uh, uh, internet uh, uh, solutions. And uh, and this is really th- these these breakups have been very strong. For all the underlying companies, once they get separated and they, and they just become, you know, more focused companies on just what they do, and they don't become, they're not a conglomerate anymore. So DD uh, looks like a really good buy in here for people that that saw how well GE did um, when it broke its company up into three pieces. Here, uh, additionally, <clears throat> you have um, News Corp, which owns the Wall Street Journal, uh, Barrons uh, Investors Business Daily, and Market Watch. They got a three hundred or two hundred and fifty million dollar deal with open AI, which is the hottest private company in the world right now, uh, to basically uh, buy content from them for you know for their delivery of all their AI services. You also had Apple this week uh, announcing that they're going to use uh, Qualcomm's Snapdragon chip in their latest um, Copilot Plus MacBooks and, and PCs. And that was a big letdown for AMD and Intel. So you have Qualcomm making new highs here, uh, new all-time highs actually on the news. Um, so this is really just a, you know, and then you know you also have earnings losers here. You got to watch out. There's trap doors everywhere. Target, Workday, uh, Intuit, Cracker Barrel. You know, there's uh, it's a, it's a stock pickers market. Even though the market has hit new highs on the strength of some big cap tech, you know, you've you've still got to be careful about being complacent with the stocks you own, Frank. On the air live with investment expert Brian Perry. Thank you for that excellent uh, analysis here, uh, Brian Perry. And and uh, let's get to the uh, some of the exciting news here. Um, certainly, the uh, the crypto world is buzzing on, on the report that I mentioned here uh, earlier. Uh, let's see here the uh, SEC approving exchange applications to list spot to list spot Ether ETFs. Uh, we're following uh, that story here, um, and this is something that's been uh, brewing for some time. Uh, indeed, it, it has happened. Uh, according to uh, Reuters and, and uh, other sources, the Securities and Exchange Commission approving applications from NASDAQ, the CBOE, and, and the NYSC, the New York Stock Exchange, to list exchange-traded funds tied to the price of Ether, potentially paving the way for the products to begin trading later this year. We saw Ethereum have that big pop uh, earlier this week, and uh, now it's been uh, bouncing around, uh, hovering at around 3,800 here. Uh, tell us about the uh, significance of this uh, following the, the Bitcoin ETFs that we saw just in uh, recent months. Sure enough. And we were, we've been talking about this for quite some time now, Frank. I mean, it's been probably the better part of, well, ever since the, uh, the SEC approved the Bitcoin ETFs, we were speculating that uh, Ethereum wasn't far behind. And here we are. Yep. Uh, and, and it's just, you know, there we are at 3,800, you know, for, for uh, Ethereum, which is not the all time high, but it's, it's pushing against the highs of the, of the last 52 weeks. And it's it's exciting uh, to see this happen here because you're going to have this pile on effect by all the big houses, you know, led by probably you know BlackRock, you know, right at the top, and and everybody else, to come out with a um, an Ethereum ETF that's that's you know a spot market ETF. Um, I find this interesting because what happened, and we have to look at the price action here with with Bitcoin. I think you're going to probably see a mirror event because there is no limit to how much Ethereum can be mined. Uh, whereas Bitcoin, you know, it's it's 21 million coins, so uh, Ethereum is making a bold move higher here, and it's more of a, a, a it's got a better use case, you know, than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is more of a store of value, uh, where where Ethereum is more of a utility crypto. The um, I think this is really even better news for Solana, which is which some argue is going to actually replace Ethereum as the go-to uh, utility. Uh, crypto uh, altcoin going forward, so I, I like the the Ethereum trade going into the uh, and this is a buy the rumor sell the news thing is I think is what happened because we saw all the Bitcoin ETFs taper off once the once they once they went live, and so the buildup was there 
uh, but you got to be careful not to be long that trade um, post, you know, when they go public IPO, because there's they're they're buying the stuff in the in the the Coinbase markets before this all happens, and they're running it up, and so. When they finally go live, you know it's like who's left to buy, right? And and they they and they pot, and it's a lot of retail investors get get uh, they get hung out on this. So it's in, in, important that ride it up, you know, through the uh, the through the um, exchanges, and then um, and then buy the dip, you know, post uh, IPO when these when all these because they're all going to hit the the market probably at the same time within a week. They'll, you'll see five of these ETH, Ethereum ETFs hit, and there'll just be too much. You know, money that's already in that trade, and I think there there will be a lot of money trying to you know, basically exit that trade on that enthusiasm, Frank. But I do like um, I do like this Solana trade here as maybe the next one that would uh, be approved for a an uh, you know an ETF down the road. So take a look at Solana here as a um, as something that um, is, is what you know what's the next big thing in crypto? I think it's going to be Solana, and if it pulls back to like 150 where it just came from, it's currently at 175. That's a nice entry point. Can you believe it? Summer's around the corner. The days are long. Weather is warm, and swarms of tourists crowd our streets and freeways. And the pace may be slower, but the traffic is getting heavier. In case you hadn't noticed, you might be traveling, but with the travel, you're driving in an unfamiliar place. And while you're having fun in paradise, unfortunately, accidents can happen. Now, if you've been hurt in an accident at home or away from home, don't let it ruin your trip or your summer. Call the compassionate team at Fielding Law Firm. Clark Fielding understands the disruption and frustration that comes of being injured in an accident that was not your fault. Clark is dedicated to getting you the justice and compensation you deserve. Whether it's a car accident, slip, trip, fall, dog bite, or any kind of personal injury, Fielding Law is here to fight for you. Clark Fielding and his team of legal sharks at Fielding Law will help carry the burden so you can focus on recovering. You'll be treated like family. Fielding Law is a local firm that is familiar with our freeways and troubled spots. Clark Fielding lives right here, too. Don't let your summer be overshadowed by an accident. Call Fielding Law Firm today for a free consultation so you can focus on getting back to enjoying life under the sun. Call 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK. Your path to brighter days ahead. ClarktheSharkLaw.com. Motaka Money continues here. 790 KBC. A big thank you once again to investment expert Brian Perry for joining us live here this afternoon. Brian Perry, the uh, chief market strategist at mintassetmanagement.com and also author of the 25% cash machine. Rough day for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. In fact, the worst day of the year so far for that blue chip index. Down 606 points today to settle at 39,065. It had hit a record high just about a week ago, about 40,000 for the first time. The S&P 500 slipping some more from its recent high, down 39 at 5,628. And the NASDAQ down 65, slipping some more from its recent high, down, six, down 65 points to 16,736. The yield in the 10-year note now at 4.48%. Crude oil moving lower by 70 cents, 76.87 a barrel. Mercifully, gas prices have come down a bit here in Southern California ahead of the holiday weekend. Brent crude in London down 54 cents at 81.36 a barrel. The star of the day, NVIDIA, on its latest earnings news, popping more than 9%, settling up $88.49 to $1,037.99 a share. On the flip side, Live Nation shares down nearly $8 at 93 and change as the government takes action, antitrust action against uh, Live Nation, Ticketmaster. In the uh, crypto space, we see a Bitcoin of about 700 now at 67745 Ethereum up 67 at $3,820. Big news uh, on Ethereum today. It looks like uh, the SEC giving the green light to Ethereum ETFs. Doge has been bouncing around right now at $0.16. Cents. Among the uh, casualties of the day, Boeing down more than $14 today, helping to drag the Dow lower. Boeing shares down 1407 the 172.21 Intel down $1.34 at $30.08. Intel, of course, was once the tech bellwether, overshadowed these days by NVIDIA, which is now called the Magnificent One. Apple shares pulling back more than $4 today at one eighty six and change. Coming up, we'll uh, talk crime in Los Angeles with the Honorable Dennis Zine. Dennis Zine will be on the line with me shortly. Also on China, a lot going on with the report of Chinese uh, military drills around uh, Taiwan. Tensions rising again there. I'll talk about that, and I'll talk about it with China expert Gordon Chang coming up here in the next half hour. Right now, the latest news for you here on 790 KBC. 
Motaco Money continues here in 790 KBC. Good afternoon. New concerns about crime in Los Angeles. These days focused on the L.A. Metro Transit System with the crime uh, reportedly up significantly on the transit system. In fact, total crimes within the L.A. Metro System surging over 65 percent so far this year. New calls for uh, getting more officers uh, back onto the system and also uh, dealing with the uh, the unhoused to uh, spend the day on the metro system. We had heard that about 1,000 unhoused people get off the system every night. Let's discuss what's happening now with the Honorable Dennis Zein, former Los Angeles City Council member, former LAPD sergeant, and current LAPD reserve officer with something like 56 years of service to the City of Angels. I'm told Dennis Zein is on the line. Dennis Zein, thank you very much uh, for taking the call here this afternoon. Thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure to be online with you at the KABC and talking about something that doesn't seem to go away, crime in Los Angeles and crime on the metro system. It continues, and the politicians continue to discuss it and decide how they're going to fix it, and it continues where, as you said, 65% increase in crime on the metro system so far this year with people being, being killed, stabbed, a shot, et cetera, drivers being attacked. And the problem continues. And now we come up with this formula that they want to dedicate 260 officers with the LAPD sheriffs, Long Beach Police Department, and then the ambassadors and the escorts, et cetera, that's supposed to stem the tide of crime. The problem has gone on so far, and they're finally coming to realize that you can't just have a police officer stand there and not enforce the law. And the sheriff of Los Angeles County recently came out with a statement that we need to engage in enforcement and not just the mere presence of a police officer because the mere presence of a police officer, deputy sheriff, does not thwart crime. It does not take the individuals who are committing crime and cause any type of fear in their mind not to commit a crime. And we see this continuing with the series of crimes that have hit the news and people are afraid. So if if MTA wants to do it right, Let the police officers do the job of enforcing the law. And the first thing they enforce is the fare. If you're not paying the fare, you don't ride the transit. And they found that 65%, 65% of the people involved in serious crime did not pay a fare. And if they don't pay a fare, then they don't believe there's any kind of enforcement. And the public, the jeopardy is with the public, and those are the victims that we see happening more and more on the transit line. So MTA, the mayor, they're panicking, trying to come up with a formula. But if you put 260 officers and don't have them enforce the law, you're not going to solve the problem. They must enforce the law. Very simply, enforce the laws that are on the books, period. And that will bring down the crime and make a safe environment for people in the transit system. Do you think the pendulum is finally swinging in in the other direction? For a while there, they were putting out the ambassadors and uh, appear to be going very soft on the the situations that uh, you've described, uh, Dennis Zine, and and now uh, even the mayor is is calling on increase uh, an increase in police presence on the metro buses, uh, trains, as well as at the stations uh, with these recent stabbings and these other serious crimes that that have happened. Uh, Are things finally going to change? Well, what you said is the presence. You need to be more than the presence of police officer. I've spoken to LAPD command staff. I've spoken to officers assigned to the transit division. And I've asked them, what is the problem? You're there. What is the problem? Well, the problem is they don't want us to enforce the law. They want us to be visible. They want us to be present. They need to finally come to the realization you must enforce the law. And once you start enforcing the law, then you can bring down the crime trends. But the people who are committing these crimes know there's no enforcement. And if there's no enforcement, the consequences are more people being victimized. In fact, the operators of the transit system, they want to put themselves in bulletproof cages to protect them from the people who get on and create crime and violence. We've had drivers of the transit system attacked. So the problem is very simple. Let the officers do the job they're paid to do in a professional manner, and we can bring this problem down and bring back a safe environment for people riding public transit. That's all you have to do. It's a very simple solution. Just enforce the law. A lot of talk also about dealing with the homeless on the system. I remember we had that report that, that said 1,000 homeless come off the system every night in Long Beach and in other areas where, where, the, where the, end, the line ends. Um, what about that issue? Well, you need to address the homeless population. We've got billions and billions of dollars that's going into the homeless situation, and they're not solving the problem. 
It's not simply money. It's simply enforcing what rules we have. You can't ride for free. You can't commit crime. You can't commit violence. You can't shoot people, stab people, and you can't ride the transit line till the terminus and then get off and then go into that neighborhood and cause disruption in the neighborhood. Homeless is a problem. It's a huge problem. But we're not addressing it and we're not solving it. And all we're doing is going back to the voters and say we need more money. We need more money. We always have our hand out. Well, we spent not millions, but billions in the state level and the local level, and it's not solving the problem. They don't have a solution, and they keep on trying, and the trying is not bringing a solution for the people who are obeying the law, respecting the law, and simply want to live in peace and tranquility. That's all they want. And I want to give the folks listening an item they can check on the Internet, crimemapping.com. If you want to see what crime is happening in your particular neighborhood, go to crimemapping.com. Enter your address, and then you can look at how many cars are being broken into, how many homes are being broken into, how many people are up. Pinpoint to your immediate neighborhood, crimemapping.com. It's a new process you can get online, and I encourage people to use that to find out how safe you are in your neighborhood. On the line with Dennis Zine, uh, talking about the uh, transit uh, crime uh, lately, and and what about the nonsense that continues uh, uh, on the graffiti uh, towers project there in the heart of downtown Los Angeles, across from uh, Crypto.com Arena, formerly Staples Center, that that I saw that's now completely uh, covered with the graffiti. Now you had a, a tightrope walker uh, apparently now facing a, a criminal investigation. Um, what about uh, the situation there right in the, the heart of downtown Los Angeles? Another serious situation that turned into a disaster. We had an individual hijack a police car with an officer and take off in the car, got involved in a couple of crap, traffic collisions, injured the officer. Uh, that's another situation that's out of control. They've given that 24-hour coverage. There are officers assigned to that building 24 hours a day to keep the people away from it, to continue graffiti or to do the, uh, the high, high jump or the high rope or whatever they want to do. Uh, so we're spending a lot of resources. The place went bankrupt. The owner of the place went bankrupt. I don't know who's going to foot the tab, but we've got 24-hour protection by LAPD providing security to keep people away from that structure. Another failed environment for the city of Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. And that's just another example of failed leadership in the city of Los Angeles. And of course, that revolving door uh, system here with the, the current DA, uh, what's, what is it going to take to turn that around? The only thing, Frank, honestly, the only thing that's going to turn that around is having Gascon retire. The only thing that will work is getting rid of Gascon, bringing someone else to take over the district attorney's office in Los Angeles County. Gascon has proven that he does not care about victims. He does not care about enforcing the law. And he's terrible. The only way we're going to turn this around is in November on the election and voting Gascon out of office, bring back a semblance of order to the county of Los Angeles. The 88 cities are suffering because of what Gascon has done to let the criminals run loose in the city and the county of Los Angeles. And Gascon, of course, being challenged by veteran federal prosecutor Nathan Hockman. So uh, that's that's the choice right there. Hockman's the man. Hockman's the man if you want to establish safety and security within the city of Los Angeles, the city and county. Again, 88 cities are suffering what Gascon has done. So whatever your political persuasion is, if you care about your life, and that of your family, friends, and neighbors, vote Gascon out. It's very simple. He needs to leave office. We can only do that through the vote, and hopefully people will be encouraged to vote no for Gascon and Hockman, yes. And something uh, else came up today that we uh, discussed previously. The UCLA uh, police chief has been reassigned following the, the campus unrest, and today the, the chancellor of the UCLA uh, University was on uh, Capitol Hill uh, testifying about what happened there with that uh, big demonstration and the, the clash between uh, the uh, pro-Palestinian um, uh, protesters and the, the pro-Israeli um, uh, protesters there on the campus and that, uh, that mess there with the encampments and all that. Um, what, uh, what is your assessment of what we've uh, heard about that uh, since that happened? Well, I know John Thomas. He was with LAPD. He retired from LAPD, went to USC as the chief, and then UCLA. Uh, they want to point the finger. It's not John Thomas's responsibility. It's the administration of UCLA that's really responsible. He's the new chief there. He's trying to do his job properly. He needs the resources to do it, and he needs to give the officers the authority to do the job. First of all, you don't set up tents on a college campus. That's where they first went wrong. You don't set up tents. As soon as they bring those tents in, those tents are taken down. They have to be removed. But once you permit that activity to take place, we saw what happened. It was a disaster. How to bring in the California Higher Patrol to augment local law enforcement. Just don't let them commit a violation. If you stop it when it begins, you can eliminate a lot of these problems. So I support John Thomas. He's a good man. 
and they're going to make a shuffling around for public uh, appeal. But the bottom line is the administration is responsible for the conduct at UCLA, SC, and all these other universities. The Honorable Dennis Zine, former Los Angeles City Council member, former LAPD sergeant, and current LAPD reserve officer. Dennis Zine, thank you very much uh, for your service to the City of Angels, uh, and thank you very much for uh, coming to the line. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dennis Zine. And let's get right out to the freeways now on 790 KBC. Mo Tackle Money continues here in 790 KBC following the latest news uh, in Taiwan and around Taiwan today. According to the BBC, China has started two days of military exercises around Taiwan with its military calling them strong punishment for the self-ruled island separatist act. According to the Chinese reports, the drills come three days after the inauguration of the president of Taiwan who called on China to stop threatening the island and accept the existence of its democracy. China sees Taiwan as a breakaway province that will eventually be under Beijing's control, but the island sees itself as distinct. Taiwan's defense ministry condemning the Chinese drills as irrational provocations. Taipei dispatching naval, air, and ground forces to, quote, defend the island's sovereignty, its defense ministry announced. The drills, for the first time, simulated a full-scale attack, according to Taiwanese military experts, rather than an economic blockade. China has carried out uh, China carried out its first encirclement operation in August of 2022 following an historic visit by then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi simulating a blockade of the main island of Taiwan with ships, aircraft and missile strikes. China has repeatedly rehearsed encircling Taiwan with fighter jets and Navy ships over the past year. Joining us live now, China expert Gordon Chang, author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War on Twitter or now known as X, at Gordon G. Chang. Gordon Chang, thanks very much for taking the call. Give us your reaction to these uh, dramatic uh, reports we're getting uh, via the BBC today. Well, China clearly has shown its warlike intentions. I think, however, that this really is huffing and puffing because I don't think Xi Jinping is ready to invade Taiwan. You will hear a number of experts say that they are ready to invade and will do so this year. But the point is, um, whatever we think their intentions are, we have to be prepared for anything at any place at any time because Xi Jinping can take us by surprise, which means that even if we think that this is not the dress rehearsal for war, we need to make sure that Taiwan is prepared and that we actually exercise our military to uh, intimidate the Chinese, just as the Chinese are trying to intimidate us. What's your reaction to the part of the story here with the, the Taiwan uh, Defense uh, Ministry uh, said that uh, this is the first time um, they simulated a full-scale attack, uh, speaking of the Chinese military, according to the, the Taiwanese um, Defense Ministry. I think that that's certainly right. Um, if you go back to the August 20, 2022 um, encirclement, that was only the encirclement of the main island of Taiwan. This time they encircled Taiwan's outlying islands, which are just very, very close to the Chinese mainland. Um, the situation has deteriorated so far that, unfortunately, we now have to engage, I believe, in pretty risky and dangerous maneuvers of our own to try to maintain peace. Because if we don't confront the Chinese, then they will just press further, and they will press so far that they will actually go to war, if not at Taiwan, at someplace else. That's how far the situation has deteriorated. Does the inauguration of the president, uh, what, about three days ago, uh, change the equation uh, somewhat uh, politically? Uh, what do you see happening here? Well, William Lai's inauguration speech um, was clearer than the words of his predecessor, Tsai Ing-wen, in terms of asserting Chinese uh, Taiwan sovereignty. Um, but there was really, in substance, no change. Um, it's just a change in tone. And the important thing that William Lai said was that there was going to be no change in the status quo. And that is music to the ears of the United States, because we always say there should be no change in the status quo across the Taiwan Strait. Um, China was going to engage in this provocative military drills, regardless of what William Lai said. Um, you know, these drills take months to prepare. So clearly they were not in reaction to what Lai actually said on Monday. All right, turning from politics to uh, economic matters, um, China's California's top trading partner with a two-way trade amounting to more than $137 billion. The uh, 
economic ties are, are extremely robust. In fact, earlier this week, uh, Los Angeles and uh, San Francisco signed um, MOUs with uh, Shanghai and, and other entities in, in China to uh, to celebrate and further the economic connections. Um, what do you see happening uh, here uh, on the economic front? Well, China right now has to export um, because Xi Jinping has abandoned all the other ways of rescuing his economy. He's basically given up on trying to rescue the property sector. He will not empower consumers for a number of reasons, including he does not want to upset Communist Party constituencies. That leaves him with manufacturing, and so he's got to have access to the U.S. and other markets. But the U.S. and other countries are starting to close their markets because of the worry about China's predatory and criminal trade practices. You know, California can benefit, of course, but overall, the United States has not benefited from trade because we've lost so many manufacturing jobs. And China is on the verge, they think, of putting the U.S. car manufacturing business out of business. So that's obviously something that President Biden will not permit. All right. On the tech front, AI, of course, a big topic of conversation and uh, AI chips, uh, very much uh, a political hot potato as well. What, what do you see happening uh, on the tech front as, as AI continues to evolve, especially as it relates uh, to the U.S. and China? Well, the Biden administration will continue to restrict uh, chip exports and the exports of chip making equipment, especially those that are high end. China will try and try to fill in the gap, but it's going to take some time. They're now down to about um, five milli, milli, nanometer chips, um, but they have really got a long way to go to catch up with everybody else. Um, so right now, um, I can think the Biden administration will do much more um, in the coming months to restrict the flow of high technology to China. And that's something that we should do, because we know that that technology is being absorbed by the Chinese military, and the military is configured to fight Americans. Gordon Chang, thank you very much for uh, taking the call here. We'll continue to follow the uh, latest news with you. That is China expert Gordon Chang, author of The Coming Collapse of China, The Great U.S.-China Tech War, and on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Gordon G. Chang. Thank you very much for joining us live here on Motec on Money on 790 KBC. What turned out to be the worst day of the year for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, closing down 606 points, selling at 39,065, slipping more from its recent all-time high, which was above 40,000 just a week ago. The S&P 500 down 39 at 5,628, and the NASDAQ down 65 at 16,736. Stay tuned now for the 790 KBC News Blitz here on 790 KBC. Afford Anything talks about how to avoid common pitfalls, how to refine your mental models, and how to think about how to think. Paula, while certainly you can mess up on a million dollars a year, it is far less likely than it is on $30,000 a year. Right. I would meet wonderful people that were struggling with a budget that was super tight. It was 100%. You need to make more money. Make smarter choices and build a better life. Afford Anything, wherever you listen.